My name is Richard Eugene Puckett. I'm going to demonstrate the karyotype. The karyotype is a dry printout process for making photographic images with an admixture of gold and platinum. Platine. I'm going to wipe my brush, get it nice and damp, ready to apply the sensitizer. You don't want to use a wet brush. It'll, it'll get your paper all wet. can produce contrast and grain. You want to brush it's just, just damp. Just so that it won't soak up the noble metals of the sensitizer. Now, I'm going to trace an outline if I can find my pencil. Excuse me. There it is. There we go. I'm going to outline the negative on the paper, you can see, so that I know where to apply the sensitizer. Arches Platine has two sides, one smooth and one slightly rough, applied to the smooth side, or the smoother of the two sides. As you see, it's outlined. Now I know where to apply the sensitizer. I don't want it running all over the paper. I don't need this anymore. Put that over there. I'm going to count out my sensitizer. First, I've got here my ammonium ferric oxalate treated with ascorbic acid. You use a 1% solution of ascorbic acid. I've added four drops. Ammonium, 40% of ammonium ferric oxalate treated with 1% solution of ascorbic acid, vitamin C. This is 10% ammonium platinum chloride. I'm going to add just one drop. There. Stir it together. Finally, I have here a bottle of uh, 10 ml of 10% gold chloride, which I purchased from Bostic and Sullivan in Santa Fe, New Mexico. I'm going to add three drops of gold. Therefore, my sensitizer is 75% gold and 25% platinum. Swirl it together, get it mixed up well. Pour out your sensitizer on the paper and brush it out smoothly and evenly as much within the boundary of the lines as possible. You do want a little spillover. The spillover will darken on exposure to UV light and as it gets darker you start to get an idea of when you can check to see if your print's ready. You don't have to keep dropping the back and examining it every few seconds. You can just watch the over brushing. And when it starts to get dark, time to start checking. There we go. I brush it diagonally, vertically, horizontally. You'll see hairs all over your paper, usually. Don't worry about those. They'll come off after it's dry. All right, so I'm going to take this, place it in my print box, and let it dry. And while I do that, I'm going to go ahead and start cleaning up my mess here. It's going to take about 10 to 15 minutes for the paper to dry. You don't want to use human paper. You can, and it shouldn't cause any problem, but it's better just to use it dry. You don't want to introduce uncertainty into a process, and that's really what having a humidified paper does. It adds uncertainty to a printout process. All right, the paper should be dry now. It's been in about 15 minutes. It's a nice dry sheet of paper. I'm going to place it in a contact print frame. There we are. Put this sheet of mylar on top of it. Let me brush off some 
pairs. There we go. As I said, once the sensitizer is dry, any lint or hairs that appear on the paper will very easily come off. They won't affect the printout image in any way. You may fear there'll be little white lines, there won't. My negative, place the negative, emulsion side down, the mylar. I'm using a film negative, a 4x5. You can use an inkjet negative. You can use an inkjet negative made with your digital camera printed out with almost any printer. I have a Canon Pixma. It cost me $30. I've successfully made inkjet negatives with that. These clamps are to hold the negative tightly against the mylar and the paper. There we are. If you don't have the negative in tight contact with the surface of the paper, it'll be soft. The mylar, incidentally, is two mil. It comes in rolls. I buy it at Hobby Lobby. Anything thicker than two mil, you're going to see some loss of definition in your print. I'm going to place this in the contact print box. Turn on my lamps. These are 13 watt FEIT, F-E-I-T, CFL UV bulbs, as you can see. The image is now printing out. Now what's going on right now is, in the presence of UV light, I'll just recap what I did. I took four drops of 10% of 10, excuse me, I took four drops of 40% ammonium ferric oxalate to which I had added eight drops of 1% ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C. To that, I added one drop of 10% ammonium platinum chloride. And to that, I added three drops of 10% gold chloride. So I have a solution that is 75% gold, 25% platinum. I use ammonium platinum chloride, preferably, because I discern that the printout is slightly grayer with ammonium platinum chloride than with potassium platinum chloride, the other common form used for platinum printing. Potassium platinum chloride has a tendency to give a print a blue cast. See how we're doing. Oh, it's coming along very nicely. As you can see, if you look at it, see the overbrushing is starting to gray. I'm going to turn off the camera again for a few minutes while this continues because it's going to take another. All right, I just checked the print, it's almost ready. What I'm going to do is prepare the first bath. first bath, I'm adding one half teaspoon of sodium sulfite to 500 ml of tap water. It's at about 70, 75 degrees. Sodium sulfite isn't a particularly, sodium sulfite is not a particularly toxic chemical, so I'm not worried about having my finger down there. There we go. That's good. Let's put that in there. Now I'm going to recap this. Sodium sulfide is sold commercially, still available as Kodak HypoClear. It's a chelating agent for iron. Let's check the progress of the print. As you can see, it looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and pull it. Turn off the box. Slide that out of my way. Pour the sulfide into the tray. So. And here is your printout in gold and platinum. 
As you can see, it's a grayish print. It's more gray. It's just a hint of blue to it. This is a little weak. It's a little lighter. I might have printed it another minute. But that's good enough for this demonstration, don't you think? Let's put it in the sodium sulfide. Oh, the tray of spoons in the There we go. Now, in the sodium sulfite, you can see right away it's darkened slightly. It's hard for you to see with the tray up like this, but I can see some of the iron coming off into the water right now. I'm just going to rock it gently. Well, perhaps I was right not to have let it go another minute because you see it's turning a nice, rich color. It's gray, just a hint of blue. That's going to go away as I leave it in the sodium sulfide. That's the demonstration for you. The rest of the process is to let it sit in the sodium sulfide for about 10 more minutes. Then I will wash it for five minutes. Then I will immerse it in a bath of 2% hydrochloric acid for 15 minutes. Then I'll wash it for about two or three minutes in running water. I'm going to place it face down. There we go. And then I'm going to soak it in a second bath of 2% hydrochloric acid, followed by another two-minute wash. Those two hydrochloric acid baths are very important. If you don't clear this print thoroughly, it will eventually, in a week or two weeks or a month, it will turn pink. And then it will gradually turn deep pink. And then it will eventually fade to black. You've got to clear it properly. After the hydrochloric acid baths, again a two minute wash, then a 10 minute bath in 5% uh, or 10% tetrasodium EDTA, which is a chelating iron agent that removes iron. It acts like a magnet, it attaches to the iron particles in the paper, lifts them up, and then when you wash the print for about five minutes after soaking it in tetrasodium EDTA, the iron is just rinsed away. Then a second tetrasodium EDTA bath for another 10 minutes. And then a final wash. Because I'm using Arches Platine, which is a heavy paper, it's 310 GSM. Very heavy. You have to wash it for about 45 minutes, maybe an hour. 